The teams are out. We're ready to go. The referee, James Linnington, who's taken charge of each of these sides this season, and both of them won. Plymouth in their change kit of all white, and they kick from right to left in this first half. Southampton in the two-tone red shirts, and they win an early throw, which Adam Armstrong will leave for Kyle Walker-Peters. And the role of Walker-Peters is going to be very interesting tonight. Seemingly playing as uh, an orthodox right back in the four. Just waiting for a little bit of movement, and it's um, Smallbone who provides it, but as he tries to play it back to Walker Peters, it goes straight out of play for a throw that will be taken by Mumba on the left hand side. Barley Mumba, the former Norwich man, throwing the ball down towards uh, halfway. Picked up there by Finnazaz. A player who's on loan from Aston Villa, neatly worked by Houghton out towards Pleguezuelo over on the right-hand touchline. The Spaniard with plenty of experience of playing in the top flight in the Netherlands before signing for Argyle. But his ball forward is straight to a Southampton man. And Taylor Harbour Bellis has got plenty of time to bring the ball down. You're with Talksport 2, Southampton nil, Plymouth nil in the second minutes. The first half of a double header of live EFL action for you on the TalkSport network today because later from 8.15 we'll be at the Hawthorns for a game between two of the top five as West Brom meet Leeds. Walker-Peters has got it now for Southampton and turns under pressure from Azaz. Lays it back to Harwood Bellis. All the early possession with Southampton which everybody anticipated would be the case but neither goalkeeper's had anything to do so far 90 seconds in Sam Parkin the former EFL striker alongside me uh, Sam what do you make of it tactically in terms of Plymouth's defensive shape yeah they're in a five at the moment so I would suggest it's the same team same setup that they had at Cardiff there's Adam Armstrong chips one inside the penalty area and he's headed back towards the edge of the six yard box for Smallbone couldn't quite get there in time from Adams's nod down and it's cleared and out of play for a Southampton throw yeah so back five at the moment uh, Edwards and Mumba the two wing backs the, the one play we weren't sure about was Finn Azaz, and he's playing tucked in off the left hand side so essentially the role that right uh, was carrying out in that draw in Wales a few days ago yeah so um, pretty much a sort of 3-4-2-1 formation 3-4-3 if you like uh, Whitaker, who is the mirror of Zaz on the other side of the field, gets it away. And Southampton do well to win it back. It's uh, another chance for them to bring it forward here with three inside the penalty area. Adams tried to make a run, uh, but it goes out of play. Adozi couldn't hook the ball back in time. And it's a goal kick which will be taken by Plymouth goalkeeper Connor Hazard. He's making the 100th senior appearance of his career today. And he just uh, spots the ball down. They've certainly missed Mike Cooper who's their first-choice goalkeeper, one of the best outside the Premier League. He had a long injury hiatus last year and then did his medial cruciate ligament in training uh, a few weeks ago. He's going to be out for the, the next few weeks as well. And our best wishes to him for his recovery. Has a deputising for him again. His long clearance, Southampton winning a lot of the second ball in the early stages here, so three and a half gone at nil-nil. Yeah, getting up the pitch, I, I do see as a little bit of an issue for, for Argyle. Obviously, Whitaker's a really good uh, mover with the ball, good dribbler. He'll get them up the pitch at times, but missing Hardy to play on the shoulder, as I said, I'm sure we'll see him at some stage tonight. That's a big part of Argyle, especially away from home, where they've been so subdued so far this season. So they need to get him back and have that counter-attacking threat, which you need on nights like tonight, where you're going to give up so much of the football against this talented Southampton side. Argyle laying the ball back to their goalkeeper again. And Hazard with a long clearance. Uh, ben Wayne's offside. Southampton winning it anyway and taking the free kick quickly with Bednarek. Another referee has said that the ball was moving. I think the advantage would have served Southampton well there. Play pulled back for a free kick that Bednarek will take. He's making his 200th appearance in English football today. And all but four of them have come for Southampton. Had a, a brief, uh, unhappy loan spell at Villa. Here's Harwood Bellis, who's on loan from Manchester City. Back towards Bednarek, inside the centre circle, and just venture forward over halfway before playing it down towards Manning. Manning left-footed ball forward, nicely taken by Adams, but he's offside, it doesn't count. And the big roar is in vain, and it remains nil-nil, four and a half minutes gone. It's a brilliant ball from Manning, wonderfully taken, collected from Jay Adams, and it gets a, a brilliant finish as well. And just watching Southampton in build-up gym, there's, there's so much movement and rotation, Will Smallbone came to right back 
in that previous attack, just as they were building the two centre-halves. Walker-Peters pushes right up into a right, right wing position. Alcaraz is almost on the... Oh, right. and the mob's try! Oh, he's over the bar, and it was from 55 yards. He saw that Hazard was off his line, and Hazard backpedalled, knew he was really struggling there. He got back, might just have had it covered. Was it going to dip under the bar? It would have been a close run thing. Armstrong only missed by a couple of feet. Well, it's an unbelievable attempt. So much so that I didn't see that coming because I was gassing on there, Jim. <laughs> he's looking square, isn't he, Adam Armstrong? He's looking wide left as if he's just going to feed it to a dozy. On the swivel, left foot, his weaker side as well. He engineers the most audacious of efforts onto the roof of the net. Brilliant attempt. Adam Armstrong, a player that... Never really did himself justice in the Premier League, but at this level, he has been fantastic. 12 goals this season, nine assists as well. Four more goal involvements than any other championship player this season. Although he's coming to tonight on the back of his worst goal-scoring run of the campaigns. Five without one. Plymouth have it. Chance for them to uh, play it for Manning. Cut out the ball that was intended for Wayne. Houghton is able to win it back, but he just plays it. Now, try to buy a throw off Manning, didn't get the touch from the Southampton left back and it goes out for a throw that Saints take and that work it through Shea Charles to Taylor Harwood Bellis. Six and a half minutes gone at nil-nil. Just the one chance, not even a half chance, but came very close to scoring Adam Armstrong with that flighted lob moments ago. Here's Jan Bednarek. Bednarek bringing it towards the edge of the centre circle. For Southampton side, who've scored 13 goals here at St Mary's since they last conceded one. Kyle Bartley of West Brom, the last player that breached the Southampton back line here. They've kept four clean sheets in a row since then, and that after only one in their previous 29 home league games. Uh, Russell Martin has been able to sort things out. And when you consider that historically his teams have tended to get better as seasons have gone on, you can understand why there's so much promise and excitement here. Charlie Alcaraz trying to bring it forward for Southampton. He couldn't find a way through, but Saints will recycle it. Smallbone plays it down to the right-hand side for Walker-Peters. Now helped on by Adam Armstrong. Smallbone will pick it up on the touchline. Works it back for Harwood Bellis again. Harwood Bellis taking a touch inside the centre circle, just drawing the blonde-haired Kiwi Ben Wayne towards him before exchanging passes with Bednarak. And it's noticeable that over the, the last three months at the start of this unbeaten run, there was still a, a nervousness about Southampton as they were trying to execute the Russell Martin game plan playing out from the back. There isn't now. They all have so much of a confidence, almost a swagger about them wanting to receive the ball in tight areas under pressure to try and beat the opposition press. Yeah, absolutely. And it's that movement in front that's really impressed me. You know, players taking up different positions. Um, it's very evident to me that they've been working on it. You know, the repetition on the training ground. Russell Martin always talks about that. Now it's a poor throw from Hazard. He tried to play it down towards Mumbo, who's guilty of ball watching. Smallbone seized upon it, drives across inside the penalty area. Argyle can repel it and Mumbo can bring it away. And then it's given away this time by Whitaker. And Carl Walker Peters immediately just brushes away from Mumba and still goes inside the box, checks right footed effort, and Hazard can collapse onto it and make a relatively comfortable save. It's terrific stuff. It's really positive from Carl Walker Peters. Just doesn't wrap his right foot around it in the end, but very direct, taking people out of the game. Tough because he can go either way. He's coming field and scored a couple of beauties with his left foot so far this season and Hazard's having a little bit of a difficult time right now and he'll want to start tonight's game well now those are the thoughts of Sam Parkin who uh, himself had the, uh, a spell in West Country football in the EFL with Exeter and as the ball is uh, brought forward by uh, Harwood Bellis and Walker Peters can bring it forward over the halfway line now for Southampton with nine minutes in Adam Armstrong dropping deep again He's got four or five of his teammates ahead of him as he picks up possession. Decides to lay it back. Southampton completely dominating the early possession. Ryan Manning bringing it forward now. He's got a dozy to his left and he just works the ball into his path. A dozy now turning inside the penalty area. A little flick off from Armstrong on the edge of the box. Alcaraz trying to take it on and isn't too far away. It was a really good strike, almost out of nothing. Minimal back lift. The ball was in behind him. He took a touch and then running almost round it, hit it right-footed. And it only beat the post by about a foot and a half. 
Yeah, he did really well to generate that, that type of power and get it almost into the corner. As you said, he's running away from the goal and it just kind of didn't deviate the last yard or two. It looked like it was destined for that far corner and just didn't shift enough. Hazard sprung to his left. You think maybe that left arm might have got there, but another close escape. Only 10 minutes of uh, perhaps shown Plymouth. An illustration of what they're going to be up against tonight. Starting eight points off the playoffs. 16th place in the division, past the halfway stage of the season, yet only eight points off the playoffs. That's why the championship is so fascinating. And, of course, you've got the best coverage of the championship and all of the EFL here on the TalkSport network. And of also eight points clear of relegation in this their first season back in the championship after 13 years away. Steve Schumacher building on the uh, great work from his close friend and predecessor Ryan Lowe, for whom Steve had been the, the number two. And Lowe won a promotion, Schumacher won a promotion. As we heard earlier, we're expecting the uh, new Plymouth manager to be in situ by this time next week. Morgan Whittaker, one of the players that uh, whoever the new incumbent will be will be delighted to inherit. Uh, just lays the ball back there for Joe Edwards. Now to his goalkeeper. And has a habit of calm things down inside his own box. There's no real press from the Southampton players immediately. They will allow the ball to come out of the penalty area before trying to put the pressure on. Second ball won by Finn Azaz around the edge of the penalty area, but the Irishman couldn't work it forward effectively for Ben Wayne and Southampton mop up at the back. Working back for Gavin Bazunu, who's not had a save to make through the opening 12 minutes here on TalkSport 2. It's been a couple of occasions where the ball's just broken 25, 30 yards from goal and they've been a little bit clumsy with their distribution, Argyle, and that's what they need, to, they need to get right. They need to get established in Southampton's half and allow the wing-backs to join in. At the moment, we're not going to see anything of Mumba in an attacking sense. He's back in a left-back position, left wing-back position, right on the halfway line at the moment. Already it feels a little bit unlike Plymouth Argyle, if that's not unfair. I'd expect them, even though Southampton are so good, so formidable right now, especially here at St Mary's, I anticipate Argyle to have a go and play a little bit more on the front foot. At the moment, it's just trying to frustrate their host, which is quite unlike their approach over the last few years. Now the battle of the two number twos is uh, already... Signpost is being an important one, Mumba getting the better of Walker Peters that time. Plymouth will be able to bring it forward here, but Wayne's touch was poor. He had Whitaker in space, he ended up giving a free kick away, which Shea Charles took really quickly, and then Mumba has given another free kick away, which Smallbone takes quickly. Mumba stopped that and gets the obligatory yellow card. Yeah, it's a shame Ben Wayne is touched just a little bit loose. Big night for a young player just making his way in the game so needs to just sharpen up just tidy up his touches like I said the, the bench tonight with the two returning centre forwards I'm sure they're going to be utilised at some stage but he'll want to do well tonight to just keep himself in the thoughts of the uh, well the management duo as it is at the moment yeah he's uh, only making his ninth start of the season tonight Ben Wayne a player who they signed from Wellington Phoenix this time last year getting the opportunity in the absence of uh, both Ryan Hardy and Mustafa Bundu who are both on the bench tonight on their way back, of which more in a moment as Adams tries to work it forward, but it's knocked away on the edge of the penalty area by Gibson. Southampton will come again, trying to roll the ball inside the penalty area for Adams. He will get a shot in on the turn. That hits the nearest Plymouth Argyle defender, which was Gibson. And Argyle will try and work it away. Long ball played forward, giving Wayne something to chase, but Jan Bednarek had a yard head start was all he needed to make sure that he stayed between Wayne and the ball and he can play back for his goalkeeper terrific bit of movement actually just spun in behind Wayne really enjoyed that and I felt that he may be able to get to the loose ball in front of Bednarak but Bednarak showed real good athleticism to make the covering challenge yeah those two Plymouth strikers on the bench tonight uh, Ryan Hardy missed the last couple of games he had a, a really bad concussion against Rotherham and so has uh, a been forced to sit the last couple out. Uh, Mustafa Bundu gashed his shin in the same game, but he's back on the bench tonight as well. As Southampton win the first corner, which will be taken on the right-hand side. Walker Peters making his way forward. Mumba staying with him every step of the way. And Adam Armstrong is uh, going to leave the corner, I think, for a dozy to take. But Manning will come across as well. It may well be uh, Manning that 
sweeps this one in with his left foot from the Southampton right. And Saints have got everybody for the dozy showing for the short one. Small bone stands on the edge of the D. Walker Peters about five yards behind him, but everyone else is inside the penalty area. Manning is making the point that Mumba's not the obligatory 10 yards away here. 15 gone on Talk Sport 2. Corner works short. In high from Adozi towards the back stick, and they'll do it all again from the other side as another corner is conceded from a defensive header. Good, bad one, I would, would suggest. Bit too floaty, but it actually lands in a quite a promising area for Southampton. They just didn't have anyone attacking it around on the far post, but uh, safety first from the Argyle defender on the back post. No no, no point in taking a risk with that, just headed it to safety. No, Pegrazela, the uh, man that got it clear. So this second corner will be a, a left-footed away swinger from that Southampton left from Manning and the header across the face of goal, hits the post, I think, and then is scrambled away. Ends up going out of play for a goal kick. It's a little flick header which came back off the right-hand upright and nobody in a position to be able to follow up and put it in. A much better set piece, flatter delivery, gets good contact at the near post and I think Shea Charles is the one that's running around the far post and just looking like he could potentially turn it home. Shea Adams pulls out, maybe anticipating the ricochet off the post but once more, Finners has the Argyle player on hand just to scramble it away and with the aid of a deflection they get the decision. And there was Harwood Bellis that had the effort, it was a good run, I think he thought he'd scored. Uh, just seemed to almost start wheeling away as the, uh, the header Beat the goalkeeper, bounced in front of the post and then came smack back off the right-hand upright before Azaz cleared it into Charles and out of play for a goal kick. It remains nil-nil, but it's Southampton having all the chances. A five attempts without reply so far. Possession up in the very high 70s. And Argyle just struggling to get a foothold in the game at the moment. Here's Adam Armstrong for the Saints. Inside his own half, left-footed ball flighted out towards the far side. That's a really good long diagonal pass, bringing a dozy into it. A dozy, left-hand side of the box, twisting and turning, getting onto his left foot, clipping it in towards the edge of the six-yard box. Easy header away from Adam Randall, and then Finazaz will be able to bring it further clear and find Whitaker for Plymouth, who will just try and take it into Southampton territory, but couldn't find a way past Charles, who easily sweeps up and. Lays it back for Bazunu. 17 minutes gone. And it's nil-nil. Might not be for too long. Here's Charlie Alcaraz. He signed this time last year for Southampton. And did well as a teenager in the Premier League. Howard Bellis. Fought over the halfway line for Southampton. Nearly all of the players have been concentrated away to our right-hand side in the first half. In front of the travelling uh, Plymouth supporters who have uh, travelled in great number, uh, occupying a half of the northern end away to our right. Ball played forward again by Southampton. Small bone, plays the way that he's facing, away from goal, back to Adam Armstrong. Helped on by Charles. Charles back for Jan Bednarek, coming out of the centre circle here. And bringing it towards the edge of the box, setting up Shea Charles. Charles behind Adam Armstrong, let it run there through for Walker Peters, who ventures to the corner of the penalty area, trying to draw Mumba, gets it onto his left foot. Thinks better of having a shot. Sent it up instead for Manning. And the goalkeeper knew that was going wide. Didn't miss the post by much. Well judged by Hazard. Out of play for a goal kick. And Plymouth have uh, withstood the opening 18 minutes. All Southampton Saints can't find a way through. And it's still nil-nil here on Talk Sport 2. Here's Sam Parkin. Yeah, the shot choked a little in the end by Ryan Manning. Loads of possession. Just probing around the Argyle box. They're back in that 5-4-1. Now, they started the game... 5-2-3, kind of out of possession. The two wider guys quite high up. And I think, given the way that Southampton have dictated proceedings, they've just got deeper and deeper, probably on the advice of the uh, the technical staff in the dugout. And that 5-4-1, they look a little bit more secure now with Azaz on the left-hand side, Whitaker on the right. Southampton, just for the moment, finding it quite tricky to play through them. Saturday is game day. And it's a double shot of Premier League action. Hear it all live on TalkSport, on the radio, online or on the app. At 12.30, Luton versus Chelsea. Live on TalkSport. Followed by Manchester City versus Sheffield United at 3pm sharp. That 
was a moment of genuine quality. Live Premier League double solstice Saturday spectacular on TalkSport. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League and the English Football League. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the English Football League. On track, Tuesday afternoon from 2 on TalkSport 2. Keep ahead of all the action in the world of motorsports. He's shown that you don't need to win from pole position. Extended hard revving roundups, in-depth racing analysis, and big name interviews. If I'd gone one and a half tenths slower, I would have been E10 on the grid. So it's so tight. TalkSport 2 rounds up the biggest stories and the latest racing rumors. Championship points are more vital than ever. On track, Tuesday afternoon from 2. On Top Sport 2. Here, right now, right here, right now. And welcome back to St Mary's. You haven't missed anything. We're 20 minutes in. Apologies for the uh, technical difficulties there. Still nil-nil between Southampton and Plymouth here on Talk Sport 2. The Jan Bednarek in possession, finding a Harwood Bellis, who's inside the centre circle. Small bone to his right. Che Adams made an early run, actually, between defenders four and five as you look across the Plymouth line. Uh, Galloway keeping a weather eye on him and actually stepped up to get him offside and Southampton had to recycle it through the midfield. It was good defending by Plymouth and they've again suppressed Southampton's attacking intent down the far touchline the Saints left. But Manning's got the ball and finds Charles. And now Harwood Bellis inside the centre circle to Jan Bednarek. 21 minutes gone. West Brom against Leeds to come up later over on Talk Sport. Here on Talk Sport 2, uh, still waiting for the first goal. Small bone with the ball inside the penalty area. Good covering header from Edwards, got it away. Back from Charles, down towards Smallbone. Helped on down the right-hand touchline for Walker-Peters. Walker-Peters doing brilliantly. Cuts back inside, gets the better of Randall. Stumbles, good ball across the edge of the six-yard box from Charles. And almost inexplicably, Alcaraz couldn't quite get on the end of it. Ball wasn't it in from Charles on the the right hand side? Just unfortunately, there was no takers round on the far post. Just everyone had just come a little bit towards the ball. As weird as it sounds, I don't think Russell Martin will be deterred by this. You know, this is the type of game that he'll have faced so often during his managerial career, and he knows that if they dictate proceedings, dictate possession for the majority of the game tonight, they will find a way because of fatigue will set in because Argyle will get disjointed at some stage, and in the main. You know, they will find a way, and they have done so far this season. Yeah, it's a night where patience might have to be one of the long suits for Southampton, for the players, for the supporters as well. Now, Plymouth, with their best opportunities likely to come on the counter-attack, will bring it forward here now. Azaz for Whitaker. Big roar of anticipation from the Argyle supporters as he brings it forward. Trying to get a left-footed shot in. Ended up being really well defended. And the ball is played off Whitaker by uh, Bednarek and goes out of play for a goal kick that'll be taken by Gavin Bazunu. But that's where Plymouth, if they're going to have any joy, that's where it'll come. If they can turn possession over, they will get Whitaker and Azaz forward very quickly in support of Wayne. Yeah, and I think, you know, even though we're only 23 minutes in, there'll be a frustration that they've not been better with the ball when they've been able to get into Southampton's half. That was lovely for Bednarak to be faced one-on-one -on -one just for a moment. Then all of a sudden, Charles appeared, little 2v1, and Bednarak was able to just usher him to the outside where he was able to make the interception. So it was good defending, but definitely helped out by the midfield cover. Four now from Charles. Out round the corner for Adams. Adams trying to release Adozi on the left flank and he's going to get there. Down towards the dead ball line. Now Adozi taking it. Oh, great perceptive ball through the six-yard box. Galloway did really well to knock that away. Comes back out again. Adozi clipping it in towards the edge of the six-yard box. That one headed clear. Azaz back inside his own penalty area. Helped further away by Galloway who has won a Premier League game here back in the day. Then Walker-Peters tries his luck, but it was a comfortable save in the end by Hazard. We were right behind that, and he got the angle right. He's trying to sweep it left-footed inside the left-hand post, but Hazard was able to make a couple of quick steps across to his right and make a comfortable save. It remains nil-nil, but it remains one-way traffic. The exact effort I was talking about about 10 minutes ago, I think if that's five yards further in, maybe 10 yards further in, that probably nestles in the far post. You just had to get loads of power on it to really trouble the goalkeeper there. But Carl Walker-Peters once more proving to be a real outlet on the right-hand side for Southampton. 24 minutes in and it's still 
nil-nil. Southampton try to win their final game of the calendar year, which is something they haven't managed since 2010, remarkably. It was a promotion-winning campaign for them. Ball played forward here. And Che Adams is caught offside. At that 10-11 season, they started the season with Alan Pardew. Talk sports, Alan Pardew. They uh, ended up getting promoted. Alan Pardew sacked after winning a game 4-0 away at Bristol Rovers. You don't get too many, many managers who lose their job on the back of a 4-0 away win. Uh, but the Saints made the change early on that campaign, ended up getting promoted. That was the last time that Plymouth came here. The first day of that season, and they won with a goal from Luke Summerfield early in the second half. Southampton have actually got a lousy record in this particular fixture. They've only scored once in their last five home matches against Argyle. I'm not convinced we'll still be able to say that in half an hour's time. Ball put out of play for a throw to be taken over on the Southampton left. So neat and tidy in possession with uh, intricate passing moves, great movement from all the players, a really good understanding uh, from the players about the fluidity of the system that Russell Martin is employing. Smallbone shipping it over the top here, but just too high for Alcaraz. He's trying to head it back across for Adams, and it goes out of play for a goal kick to Plymouth. It's 0-0, 26 minutes on the clock here on TalkSport 2. Decent attempt, nice little give and go. Alcaraz picking the ball up, just setting it back, and then immediately on his toes trying to penetrate Argyle in behind, in between wing back and centre half, just a little bit too heavy to pass. But I think it's been a pretty decent 26 minutes from Southampton. They've got the ball to a dozy in dangerous areas, and he's got the beating of Edwards, no question. It's just been his end product. His final ball, the last one, the left footed one that he flashed across the six-yard box. That was more like it. It was just outstanding defending from Galloway. But you don't want to leave it up to your three centre-halves. If that happens too often, they will get breached. So Edwards and Mumby in the wide roles for Argyle really have to be at it and try and stop it at source. Yeah, Dozy, another one of the players that arrived here from Manchester City's academy and a £10 million signing who scored three goals in his last four games coming into today. It's actually a product of Millwall's youth system back in the day before making his uh, move up north. He's still only 20. I think of the, the money that they made on Lavia. Uh, they've signed Shea Charles for 15 million, who I think would probably already have a value in excess of that. Harwood Bellis has done well on loan. It's been a, a very successful route for players down from Manchester City to Southampton, which will only be helped by the fact that Jason Wilcox is now the director of football here with his Manchester City links. Remains 0-0 with 27 minutes gone. Manning in a more central position picking it up. And he's worked it back for Bednarek. Out towards Smallbone, who's uh, cropped up on the left-hand side for a moment. Ryan Manning's got it again. Now he goes towards Adozi. Adozi picking up the ball and running at Edwards and getting towards the byline. And Edwards that time defended it really well and ends up getting a free kick. But he just snuck in in front of Adozi, trying to shepherd the ball over the line. And Adozi's youthful exuberance saw contact made. Free kick to Plymouth. They're approaching the half-hour mark with their clean sheet still intact. Much better from Edwards. Sliding challenge a few moments ago over on the far side and there just shepherding him. No pitch really to run into for Adozi. Wins the free kick as well. Excellent defending. And I think, you know, with Manning, you just spoke of Manning coming in field and they, they tend to do that to try and really overload it. So I think that's to take another Argyle player in there, leave Adozi isolated up against Edwards. There's not going to be an opportunity, I don't believe, for Southampton probably to play through Plymouth Argyle when they're so well set and so well structured the joy is going to have to come in the wide positions and at the moment it's coming through a dozy Carl Walker-Peters has got it the uh, ironic cheers you heard as uh, Connor Hazard was given the hurry up by the Southampton fans and then when he eventually took the goal kick he just flighted it straight out of play for a throw Bednarek's got it uh, Bednarek will find Taylor Harwood-Bellis four now from Walker-Peters Back from Shea Charles, who's back in the side after suspension today. Walker-Peters back through the centre circle for Jan Bednarek. Bednarek towards Manning, Manning controlling it. It's just a game of two-touch at the moment. Howard Bellis bringing it forward. 
And he's cheated, he's taken a third. Ball forward, Smallbone helping it on. Adam Armstrong trying to guide it forward again to link up the players. A really good leap by one of the smaller men on the field. Shea Charles has got it now. Charles to the right-hand side of the penalty area where Adams lofts the ball in. And took a deflection before being headed away by Gibson. And Southampton will try and win another corner. They've succeeded. It'll be their third as we get to the half-hour mark and nil-nil. They're looking actually quite comfortable at the moment, Argyle, I would, I would suggest. They defended pretty much the dead balls excellently to this point. This corner works short, Manning helping it inside the penalty area. And then getting it back just outside the box. Smallbone, the only outfield player deeper than him. He plays it in and it's cleared. It comes back out for Ben Wayne, and Wayne now on the counter-attack. Just started playing basketball. Three kicks gone against him for the handball. It was one-on-one -on -one for a moment, although he was still only on halfway. But then as he tried to deal with an awkward bounce, he instinctively threw a left arm towards the ball, and James Lillington had an easy decision to make. Southampton taking the free kick quickly. Small bone to his right-hand side for Harwood Bellis. The possession now... Up to 83, 83-17, seven shots without reply. But the XG still hardly made a scratch, 0.21. That's all that Southampton have had to show for the uh, opening half hour. Harwood Bellis. Laying it back for Smallbow to uh, Jan Bednarek. Now to Ryan Manning. Manning with a long left-footed ball over the top. Looking for a dozy. That's a well-ploughed furrow down that left-hand side for Southampton tonight. Edwards faces him up. He almost worked it back perfectly to Charles on the edge of the penalty area, but Azaz is going to be able to bring it away. Turn into trouble. Ended up conceding a throw. He thought that might have been a double ricochet, but assistant referee over on that far touchline, Alex James, didn't agree. And it's a throw taken quickly by Southampton. Walker-Peters, too much on it for Adams, and it goes through to the goalkeeper, has it. What does Southampton need to improve then for all the possession that they're having? The fact that they've, they're have having a side of goal every four minutes, but they haven't really worked hazardous yet, apart from the one that hit the post. Mm. Final ball, absolutely. I think the individual duels, I think always in games like this, you're looking at your, your best creative players, your dribblers, to take their opponent out of the game. It's essentially a game of chess we're looking at. So one-on-one, -on -one, you've got to be brave. You can afford to be, I think, at this stage of the game and take on your opponent. Adozi's doing it to a degree, but his final ball's let him down. Now Southampton bring it forward again with Walker-Peters. And he's just outside the penalty area. Alcaraz does well to let that run. Manning will be able to pick it up. Left-footed ball in from him towards the far post. Everybody's missed it. Walker-Peters keeps it in. Pulls it back for Smallbone. His effort blocked by Galloway. And then Wayne is fouled as he tries to bring it forward quickly. Shea Charles made sure that he couldn't get any further free kick to Plymouth midway inside their own half but a little bit of respite yeah I mean it's a really tough half for Argo you can see the frustration I, I would say the wing backs you know they've been playing so close to the three centre halves there'll be a frustration there because they can't get up the pitch and they're both really good attacking wide players Mumba's obviously played a lot of his football wide in the 4-3-3 so he doesn't want to be defending all night, but at the moment they're just pinned back in. That's better, crossfield ball, and Edwards does cross the halfway line. And it's Joe Edwards, the right wing back, making his way forward. Just trying to link up with Morgan Whitaker. Couldn't do so, but it is a throw. Argyle haven't been able to get their leading scorer into the game at all as yet. Whitaker, throw taken by Edwards. He's got more than 200 Plymouth games behind him. He's the only player in this side that can say that. Now the ball is chipped over the top for Ben Wayne to chase. And he'll get there first around the edge of the penalty area. Bednarek did well, held him up and won it cleanly. Wayne's actually stayed down for a moment. Southampton allowed to continue. High ball four down the left-hand side of the Plymouth box. And Adozi gives chase. Picks it up, comes back towards the edge of the penalty area. Now we'll try and beat the retreating Edwards again. He can't. Southampton get a throw. Wayne's OK, he's back on his feet and uh, making his way back into uh, midfield position. Yeah, he's been quite an isolated figure up front at times for Argyle. Ben Wayne, throw taken on the Southampton left. 11 minutes to go to half-time. Charlie Alcaraz in possession. He's played it back for Harwood Bellis. 
Harwood Bell is in the central area. He's 15 outside the penalty. He's just giving it away and then retreats very quickly. And another Plymouth counter attack is on. It's Azaz bringing it forward. Mumba to his left. Wayne made the run, but not where Azaz was. And it's innocuously, effectively passed straight back for Gavin Bazunu. Possibly the first time tonight that they've had four players up the pitch. First time Mumba's joined in an attack and the space just got closed down just really quickly. A couple of covering Southampton defenders made it a tough pass for Finn Azaz, but there'll be a frustration there again and not being able to make the most when they've had possession in the final third. Ben Wayne's been game, hasn't he? Uh, I've liked some of his movement. A couple of the runs on the shoulder, he's bent his run in behind. It's been... You know, intelligent movement, but he's not particularly quick. He's game, but he's not been able to breach really Harwood Bellis and, and Bednarek because of that lack of pace. And now Harwood Bellis plays a 50-yard ball forward. Alcaraz is there and wins the throw on the Southampton left. We've got West Brom Leeds coming up for you later, 8.15 on TalkSport, which is a match of real significance as far as Southampton fans are concerned. Saints starting the night three clear of Leeds. And five behind second place Ipswich, another six adrift of runaway leaders Leicester. They've got the best record at this stage of a championship season in EFL history. So we're bringing West Brom against Leeds. It is over on Talk Sport, but as well as the play by play action, we'll have news of every goal as it goes in over the course of the night in a full programme in the Championship League One and League 2. We've got a couple of live Premier League games for you tomorrow as well. Luton against Chelsea and Manchester City against Sheffield United. They kick off at 12.30 and 3 o'clock respectively tomorrow on Talk Sport. Now Plymouth able to bring the ball forward. Finazaz pulled to the ground. It's a free kick which has uh, been given away by Che Adams. Interesting to see where Adams' his future lies. There's plenty of speculation that it, it won't be here. He's in his last season of his contract. A player who has played 160-odd games for Southampton. His uh, goals have come in fits and starts. He's provided some very big moments for the club in his time here, but I just wonder whether he'll be playing his football elsewhere before too long. Ball headed down through the midfield and Plymouth have got it again. Wait, turning it out towards Whitaker. Whitaker with a, an inadvertent little one-two with Harwood Bellis, then tried to slip it back through the midfield for Wayne. Couldn't do so. Walker Peters has it back, flicked on by Adam Armstrong, falls for Smallbone, back for the Geordie striker. Adozi making a good run to his left. He just couldn't quite get the elevation to find him, and Jordan Houghton could put his foot on the ball in the midfield. But he's steering it forward, it'll come straight back again. Won by Bednarek and brought forward by Alcaraz. Now Charles into the feet of Adam Armstrong. Down for Walker-Peters. Adams makes another run that wasn't spotted by his teammates early enough to be an effective one. Wayne comes back, tries to put his foot in. And the ball goes out of play for a throw. Everybody claims it's theirs. And assistant referee Andrew Fox finds in Plymouth's favour. Seven to go to the break. Plymouth hanging in there. Got a little scrappy, hasn't it, which... Will suit, suit them. Suit Zaga, yeah. yeah, absolutely. They've had a little bit more joy. I was disappointed there when Ben Wayne was able to set Whitaker back there. He was in good possession up against Manning and he tried to return the favour. And I thought it was on for the first time to probably isolate the fullback. I mean, I'd really fancy Whitaker if he got running at Ryan Manning, got an opportunity now, maybe. Uh, one of the supporters here tonight, Rishi Sunak, Southampton fan from up the road in uh, Winchester. And he's here this evening, watching on. Seven minutes to go to half-time. And it's nil-nil between Southampton and Plymouth Argyle. Ball played on by Smallbone. Down to the right-hand side for Walker-Peters. Walker-Peters has got two Plymouth defenders with him. He's done well, he's dropped his shoulder, he's got past Mumba. Checks back from the byline, pulls it back for Smallbone. Edge of the area. He can't get a shot in, but he does tee up Alcaraz. First one blocked. Recycles it, lays it back for Bednarek. Plymouth have done well, they've... Push forward and now hold a line outside the penalty area. But it's constant Southampton pressure. 84% possession at the moment. But still nil-nil with six to go to half-time here on TalkSport 2. Play forward again by Harwood Bellis. Back for Bednarek. To Southampton centre-halves just swapping over for a moment. Smallbone drifts away to the right-hand side of Bednarek. He's used him as a decoy and gone back for Harwood Bellis. Good ball inside the penalty area. But the flag is up. And it's a free kick. That'll be taken by Plymouth, and we welcome listeners from Talk Sport here at St Mary's. It's nil-nil, six minutes to go to half-time. Southampton dominating every department. They've had 
Nine attempts without reply. Their possession is in the mid-80s, but they can't find a way through a stubborn and well-drilled Plymouth back five. Uh, the much-travelled, prolific EFL striker Sam Parkins alongside me. Sam, Southampton and Plymouth have both played well. Very different game plans, but both have been executed pretty well so far. Absolutely. I think it's become a little scrappy the last 10 minutes or so, which will suit the visiting side, especially considering that they've had their woes on their travels this season. So they frustrated Southampton to the point where they've been running out of ideas the last few moments. And Adozi on the left-hand side has shown flashes. Him against Edwards' early stages tonight was a little bit of a mismatch. But in terms of good opportunities on Hazard's goal, there's nothing really to talk about. And the game plan tonight is clear. It's not the front-footed football maybe that we came to expect under Steven Schumacher. They've set up to try and maybe escape with a point tonight. And to this point, job well done. Yellow card has just been shown to Will Smallbone of Southampton. Uh, Bally Mumba, the other player in the book. The closest we've come to a goal was a header from Taylor Harwood Bellis uh, from a corner. It came back off the post and then Finners as did really well to defend it and make sure that he was first to the second ball and was able to hit it off the nearest Southampton player for a goal kick. It's the closest that either side have come. Adam Armstrong from 55 yards very nearly embarrassed Connor Hazard early in the game, but uh, his flighted lob went just over the bar onto the roof of the net with the Argyle goalkeeper struggling. But with four minutes from half-time, and it's still nil-nil. The live commentary of the game continues over on TalkSport 2. If you've got the TalkSport app, uh, just swipe to the right and you can keep abreast of all of the action as it unfolds. Walker-Peters getting it in here, and it's steered by Galloway, wide for a corner, which will be taken Southampton's fourth with four minutes to go to half-time. Southampton nil, Plymouth nil. And the corner will be taken on the Southampton right. Manning is going to come across to take it. And Galloway slicing that was uh, very grateful that he didn't slightly misjudge it because it came pretty close to his right-hand post as it was. Mumber a one-man wall, just keeping an eye on the short one. It is flighted directly inside the penalty area. Defensive header comes from Houghton. We come out towards Walker-Peters, who did really well, because if Edwards had nudged that pass in, the counter-attack could have been on. Then a Southampton player goes down on the edge of the penalty area. It's Armstrong, there's no foul. And Plymouth bring it forward. Three against two. Azaz, here's Whittaker. This might be their moment. Morgan Whittaker, what a good challenge coming in to deny him a shot. And then Adozi from a prone position on the edge of the six-yard box. Steers it away for a corner. Brilliant defending. Exceptional defending. He knows that Morgan Whitaker's wanting to come in field and shoot left-footed. So therefore, he just cuts off that angle. And then adozi has got the athleticism to beat him in a race. Drags it, Morgan Whitaker, onto his right side. And then the Southampton wide player's the favourite. And he makes a brilliant sliding challenge. But just having the understanding, the presence of mind, not to allow him to shoot left-footed, which certainly would have caused Gavin Bazuna a problem. Well, Southampton's defensive solidity here at St Mary's has now extended into an eighth hour since they last conceded. Plymouth's first corner of the night worked short. Azaz setting it up. Whitaker from 25 yards with a left-footed effort that was really well blocked by Che Adams. He just threw himself into the line of fire and the ball ricocheted off him. 60 yards upfield of the Plymouth goalkeeper, Hazard, who then shanks the ball out towards the left-hand touchline. It was well controlled by Galloway, but from an offside position. Southampton take the free kick quickly. Uh, just a, a little warning shot across the bows with that counter-attack. A three against two, which will keep Southampton honest. A reminder that they can't afford to lose possession high up the field because Plymouth can break quickly. For Southampton gambled too many bodies forward. Yeah, and I've said about, you know, Argyle's set up, looking to frustrate. A small one plays inside the penalty area here for Adam Armstrong. And he's checked back for Walker-Peters. Still inside the penalty area. Back for Smallbone again. Right-footed, teased in. Headed away by Plegrizuelo. Out only as far as Bednarek. Bednarek between the lines for Alcaraz. And then Alcaraz is slipping it off to his left-hand side. Got the pass all wrong. And Manning, in the try to make something of it, has fouled his man and gets a yellow card. Yeah, definite yellow card, cynical. Finazaz hasn't got that real pace to drive away from Southampton there, but would have been into Southampton's half and players joining in, it would have been another counter-attacking opportunity. I was just going to say, 100% 
in Argyle's mindset, the coach's game plan tonight would be to keep it tight and then you can influence things from the substitutes bench. And tonight, if they can go 60, 65 minutes at nil-nil and then introduce Ryan Hardy in particular, that will be in his thinking. Let's frustrate and let's go and win it late if we can stay in the game. Yeah, Hardy, the uh, joint leading scorer with uh, six this season for Plymouth. And Mustafa Bundu, another player that they have the option to bring off the bench. He's only got a couple since his move from Anderlecht. Player who made his name in Denmark, the international for Sierra Leone. Almost at half-time. There's not going to be too much time to be added on at the end of this first 45, if any at all, which is a rarity. Here's Whittaker. Looking for Houghton inside the penalty area. Now it's clipped in by Edwards. It goes over Smallbone's head. Wayne gets a shot in on the turn. But off balance has shanked a difficult chance wide. It goes out of play for a goal kick. And there will in fact be two minutes added on at the end of this first period. We're in them now here on TalkSport 2. Jim Bradford and Sam Parkin talking through the action on the south coast tonight where it is still nil-nil. Better again, though. A couple of attempts in quick succession. He collected it nicely. Wayne just on the swivel couldn't control the strike, but working increasingly hard up there for very little reward. He's had, you know, sparse touches, I would suggest, throughout this first half. Now, probably told to run himself into the ground for an hour, as you uh, alluded to earlier. Southampton working down towards Walker Peters. Right footed teased him from him inside the penalty area. Adams! And the goalkeeper at the second attempt can make the save. Adams didn't really get hold of it. He had a defender making life difficult for him. Good defending by Gibson. But the shot on the turn. Lack purchase. It did just ask a question of Hazard, but he got his hands down behind it to gather gratefully at the second time of asking. Yeah, defensively got themselves into a bit of a mess for maybe the first time. Chatham's able to pin there, edge of the six-yard box, little deflection on the shot, actually did the goalkeeper a favour. And do you know what? I don't mind that. Why not? You know, all this intricate stuff is lovely on the eye, and I'm not absolutely saying it's the, the wrong way to go about things, but every now and again, just put one in there, feel one in there, and let the forwards go and attack it. And it's not really Russell Martin's style, but tonight... You know, there's probably a case for that, especially now when they've just lost their way over the last 10 minutes. Alcaraz getting it forward. This might be the last attack of the first half with about 20 seconds of the two minutes remaining. Ball's played back to the edge of the Southampton penalty area for Shea Charles. Good movement forward from Manning. Manning drove it towards the near post. The goalkeeper stopped it. It looped up off him and goes to safety out of play for a throw. Throw that they'll barely be time to take. Smallbone back for Harwood Bellis. Two minutes are now up, and James Leanton blows the whistle. There's a big cheer from the Argyle fans away to the right hand side because the clean sheet remains intact. There have been some nervy moments, maybe not quite as many as they anticipated because the back five have done a very solid job in the face of constant Southampton pressure. Ten shots to two. 80% possession, they tell their own story. Been some nice moments from Saints, Howard Bellis hitting the post, but so far they've been frustrated. Yeah, job well done, I would say. Defensively looking really hard to, to breach. Grown in confidence to a degree towards the tail end of that half with having a few shots of their own. And yeah, a bit of frustration I would imagine for Russell Martin that they haven't been able to execute their, the game plan that they've done so well the last few weeks. I don't think he'll deviate away from it. We know that. It's just about those little intricate changes probably that he can make within the style of play. I'd like to see more from the two number eights. I think Alcaraz um, in particular has been pretty quiet and Smallbone's coming very deep, getting involved with the build-up uh, around about the halfway line with the two centre-halves. And with the form that Joe aribo has been in, that's a definite change I could, would anticipate if it remains level uh, well into the second half. He's the type of player that can, can break down a, a deep block, that can go past people, that can create something. So that's something to keep an eye on. But I think, again, Russell Martin will have been in this game so many times during his management career, his young management career at this stage, and found the way. And we see the clips from the training ground. He wants his team to have possession and tire the life out of the opponent. And if they can do that and they can win in the 89th minute, he'll rub his hands together and it's a job well done. So there won't be panic down there, but credit to Argyle because that's been a good defensive showing. So what do you think the biggest frustration will be then for Russell Martin? Final ball, quality of the chances, maybe the intensity as well. I think it's easy to get a little bit lacklustre, isn't it, when the players are all behind the ball in their, in their shape. So 
I think more than any other club at this level and probably more than any other manager will be things that he works on in the training ground. And I don't know what the patterns will be, mm -hmm. the intricacies in the final third, but when they're not executed, that's probably the biggest frustration for him. Tonight, that would probably be a case to a degree because they haven't been able to carve open enough good chances. Final ball, definitely a dozy. Keep feeding him up against Edwards. You would think he'd get one right to this point. That's been lacking. Probably not enough from the two you know, goal getters in terms of Che Adams and um, Adam Armstrong as well. So quiet halves for them. But again, sometimes you applaud the setup of the opponent and the interim manager. We're not allowed to call, it, call him that, are we? But you know what I mean? The, um, the director of football. Director of football. That's a proper title. Um, he's done his job well. And he's mixed up the tactics in the game so far. Played different shapes. So I thought it'd probably be a continuation. Go on, just do what Steve, Stephen Schumacher's got great success doing. Mixing up the tactics, really good effect so far. Well, very interesting second 45 minutes to come. Plymouth doing well, hanging in there. Southampton playing well, can't find a way through. Half time, it's Southampton nil, Plymouth Argyle nil. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League and the EFL. Put on a New Year spread to remember. With any three packs for the price of two across fresh and frozen party food at Morrison's. More pleasing the party people. Morrison's to shop at Morrison's. Majority of stalls subject to availability. Lowest priced item free. Our friends 1st of January. Look at him go. He's a quality striker. No, not him. The electrician fixing those lights. Wow. Is he? Yes, he uses QuickBooks to prepare for self-assessment. This is truly game-changing. Use QuickBooks year-round to ensure your income tax return is shock-free. That's how you business differently. Into it, QuickBooks. Britain's best-selling vehicle has been revolutionised. The all-new Ford Transit Custom. Now with Sync 4 connectivity as standard and vehicle health monitoring with Ford Live Uptime System, helping you be there for your customers. And until the end of December, get 0% APR on three-year Ford Options Finance. Ford Pro. Driving productivity. Search Transit Custom 0%. According to SMMT data, free post Ford credit. Business type exclusions apply. It was the week after Christmas and all through the house. Nobody even knew what day of the week it was anymore. Well, right now, it's the Oak Furniture Land Big Weekend. So throw off those duvet covers and dive into five days of extra savings with many products now at their lowest price ever. And whilst these savings won't be around forever, our stunning sofas, beds and dining tables will be for years to come. Discover style that lasts and save on everything in the Oak Furniture Land Big Weekend. Sale ends Tuesday. Hey, how would you end this year on a high? by getting in a last-minute holiday for the holidays. Finally getting the old gang back together, throwing the party of the year. Or how about winning on Lotto? Well, this Saturday, another huge £50 million Lotto jackpot must be won. Or thousands of you will win a share of the jackpot. It could be you. Lotto from the National Lottery. Play on app. Account terms, rules and procedures apply. Players must be 18 or over. <gasps> As if you didn't already love the middle of little enough, we're now offering up to 40% off. That's up to 40% off selected products in the middle of little, whether you like crafting, cooking, or just having a look in. In store now. Now that's big on quality. And always little on price. Middle of Little excludes food items. Subject to availability, selected stores GB only. Step up to the hockey for exclusive coverage of the 2024 PDC World Darts Championship. Tonight, from 8, live on TalkSport 2. That is something special! TalkSport 2 hits the bullseye with live and exclusive commentary direct from Alexandra Palace as the giants of World Darts clash in pursuit of the Sid Waddell Trophy. It's double turn! The 2024 PDC World Darts Championship. Tonight, from 8, live on TalkSport 2. On DAB+, online, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. Pens is his match-winning shot. Five sets of brilliance, but ultimately, in the last set... Barry Van Pierre was too good. A second ton plus finish in what was the deciding set. And Damon Henter there has put in a pretty solid performance. 16 for tops for the match. And Johnny Clayton, for the fourth time this afternoon, wins a decision.
deciding left. The Polish number one in for double 16. He's already missed one match start. And he only needed a second match start to get over the line. In the third round, I must play my my best game. Two trolls for an 11 data to wrap things up. That's nicely done from Jim Williams. He might not miss a 30 for the match. He doesn't need asking again. The legend is back at the palace. Back winning. This is getting boring. Boringly good. Well, welcome back to St Mary's. It's Southampton nil, Plymouth nil. But straight after us here on TalkSport 2, we're back to Alexandra Palace for more live action from the round of 16 in the PDC World Darts Championship. Uh, let's check in now with the brilliant commentary team tonight, Mark Wilson and the asset, Paul Nicholson. Hi, guys. Hi, Jim. Uh, good evening. Yeah, we're here halfway through an action-packed day earlier on wins for Damon Hetter, for Johnny Clayton and for Raymond van Barneveld. 56 years old, sets up a tie against the 16-year-old Luke Littler in the last 16. Tonight, we've got four former and current world champions in action. Gary Anderson, Michael Van Gerwen, Stephen Bunting and Michael Smith, the defending champion here, are all in action. Paul Nicholson alongside us. Paul, this promises to be the best slate of games so far. And based on what we've had for the last two days, that's some uh, recommendation. Yeah, on paper, this looks irresistible, doesn't it? And what we got from yesterday afternoon really did set up what we're actually going to get tonight. As far as this afternoon's concerned, it wasn't as good as yesterday, but we didn't expect it to be. But as far as the defending champion Michael Smith against Chris Dobie, that record of 31-180s in seven set matches, that could be under threat tonight. And it's not just because of Michael Smith's proclivity of hitting 180s, it's more about Dobie. He was basically just very, very unfair to Ross Smith at times in his game yesterday. But when you've got the likes of Anderson, Van Gerwen against Bunting, and you've got the defending champion in Dobie, and the X Factor of Boris Kritschmer from Croatia creating history for himself and his country tonight, that is a great slate. It is. Uh, no one's talking about Michael Smith. He's, he's quite low, relatively speaking, in the betting. He's got his hands full with Dobie tonight, but can he take a big step towards defending his crown? I think if he beats Dobie tonight, it'll be seen as an upset. I think if you look at what Michael Smith has done over the last six months, he won a title in the summer, but he hasn't won a title since going to this new equipment. And I know there's been a lot made of that, but he doesn't look as likely with this new kit as his previous stuff. At the start of the year, he went from being world champion to Bahrain, won there straight away. He won a European tour event in Munich. Then he won a floor tournament. You all thought, everything's fine. But then he moved to shot darts and it just hasn't clicked yet. OK, in that respect then, uh, could be an upset there. But what about Van Gerwen against Bunting? Van Gerwen, three-time champion. Bunting, who won at the lake side, of course, hasn't dropped to set Bunting. He was outstanding yesterday. Can he provide an upset in that one? That's what makes this game so interesting, the fact that Van Gerwen and Bunting haven't dropped to set yet. But Bunting has been so assured. This new mindset of his is intriguing me a lot because we all know he's a great dart player. But the fact that he's found another level with the help of a hypnotherapist, watch out everybody and watch out Michael Van Gerwen. If he beats Van Gerwen tonight, everybody will see it as a shock. But based on his form of the last three months, I don't think that's the case. Uh, and our first game of the night, Boris Kirchner, the Croatian number one, who, who broke down in tears in his uh, last game. He's never made it. Uh, past the second round before, so he's he's obviously beaten that. He's taking on the two-time champion, Gary Anderson, who a lot of people are talking up as a potential winner again here. And they should be, because his section of the draw has opened up with the exclusion of Gerwin Price last night at the hands of Brendan Dolan, who waits the winner of Gary Anderson against Kirchmer tonight. Kirchmer has never been to the last 16. You mentioned that he's never been to the last 32, but Gary's only lost in seven, well, 15 World Championships here. He's only lost twice in the last 32. His debut year and last year to Chris Dorby, and we know how good he is. Yeah, winner of that one plays. Brenda Dolan, an octave go with Price last night. I've got to ask you about the battle of the ages. Barneveld, 56, Littler, 16. It's going to be a seismic battle tomorrow night live on TalkSport 2. It's going to be awesome. I really can't wait to see that game pre-New Year. Luke Littler's dreams are just coming true here, and the fact that he's got Barneveld in the last 16 just before New Year. This is what dreams are made of. I don't know what was under the Christmas tree on Christmas Day. It might have been an invitation to that game, but barneveld has got his work cut out, and I think Littler goes in as a hot favourite. I think he beats him. Wow, OK. Your winners tonight then, Nico. Give us the, the three winners tonight. Anderson, Van Gerwen in seven sets, and Dobie in six. 
Wow, OK, so Chris Dobie then to knock out the defending champion, says uh, Paul the Asset Nicholson. Uh, go on, give the listeners on Talks What Two who might not have heard you already. Who are you going for as winner of this tournament? I've gone for MVG, and that's the main reason why I'm being stubborn with the uh, conflict that he's got with Bunting tonight. I always knew that he was going to be up against Stephen at this stage and that he would have to find that ballistic mode which you've seen at times. I think his mindset has been perfect coming into this tournament and I think he will be severely tested tonight, but he's got the mental edge on Stephen. That mental side of the game is going to be tested for Bunting tonight. I just wonder if he's got enough against Van Gerwen. OK, Paul will be alongside us. Chris uh, Mason will join us as well later on for commentary. Three more games live from the Alexandra Palace. World champions everywhere you look. We're on that you guys at the football here at the Alexandra Palace for three more crackers from 8 o'clock tonight. Mark, I appreciate it. Thank you very much to you and to Nico as well. If you never heard darts on the radio, boy, does it work. It's absolutely fantastic. All the drama, the adrenaline, everything that you could want. And it's back with the boys at the end of this game. We'll pick up the darts action. They'll be midway through. Kutchmar against Anderson. Then, as they were saying, Van Gerwen against Bunting and Smith Doby all live on TalkSport 2 from Ali Pali tonight. Before that, though, second half from here at St Mary's, and here's the story so far. Manning left-footed ball forward, nicely taken by Adams, but he's offside, it doesn't count. And the big roar is in vain, and it remains nil-nil. Oh, and the mob's oh, oh, he's over the bar, and it was from 55 yards. He saw that Hazard was off his line, and Hazard backpedaled, knew he was really struggling there. He got back, might just have had it covered. Was it going to dip under the bar? It would have been a close run thing. Armstrong only missed by a couple of feet. So the second corner will be a left footed away swinger from that Southampton left from Manning and the header across the face of goal. Hits the post, I think, and then it's scrambled away. Ends up going out of play for a goal kick. And so it is nil-nil as the two sets of players come out right on cue for the second half. We were speculating in the first 45 minutes, Sam Parkin, that uh, the instruction to Ben Wayne, the Argyle striker, might have been run yourself into the ground for an hour and then we'll bring Ryan Hardy off. We were wrong. Run yourself into the ground for 45 minutes and then we'll bring Ryan Hardy on. So that change is being made now. Hardy available again to play after missing two games because of concussion. 17 goals last season in the promotion winning campaign and the Scotsman is on for Ben Wayne at the start of the second half. Yeah, I feel a little bit sorry for, for Wayne actually because you know this run in the team's probably come a little bit early for him. As I said in the first half, he's he's very game. He made some intelligent runs actually. He just lacks that, that real athleticism to get to get beyond to, to properly stretch teams and Ryan Hardy does that in absolute abundance. And in terms of the pattern of the game set up for him really on the counter they don't really have to overcommit now with the two wire players Hardy can occupy that back for himself right, so we're back underway I'll run through the two teams for you in a moment Hardy coming on the last goal that he scored was as a substitute against Sheffield Wednesday the only goal he scored in his last dozen appearances Southampton lining up Bazunu in goal Walker Peters Harwood Bellis Bednarek and Manning Alcaraz Charles and Smallbone Adam Armstrong, Adams, Anadozi, the front three. A Plymouth Hazard in goal. A back five. Edwards, Plegwazuelo, Gibson, Galloway, Mumba, then Houghton and Randall. And a forward three of Whitaker, Azaz, and now Hardy. As Southampton bring it forward. The left hand side of the area for Manning, and he shanked his cross into the chapel stand. And they had a play for a goal kick. But Southampton picking up where they left off, Sam. The. Uh, First half, plenty of possession, but not necessarily the quality of the final ball that they would want. We're a minute into the second period, and it's still Southampton nil, Plymouth nil. Yeah, it was interesting to hear Russell Martin talk about the congested Christmas period and that you get quite often some drab games, and it's just about getting over the line, isn't it? And he would absolutely take 1-0 now, and I think looking ahead in this half... Certainly the impact of substitutes have played a big part for Southampton over the last few games. Fraser in particular, last time out, coming on and getting a brace. Of course, Che Adams came on and scored as well. And this is another night for that, isn't it? Can those players that are in reserve right now come on and make the difference and take the three points? Uh, pretty kick given away by Jordan Houghton for Plymouth. 15 yards outside the penalty area. And Manning will push forward to take it. Adams waiting, just backpedalling inside the D. 
And then Plymouth condensing play defensively with a line of seven, but there's probably only about eight, nine yards between them all from left to right. So everything concentrated in the middle, trying to stop the Southampton runs here. It wasn't the best delivery in from Manny, a little bit too low and flat. Plymouth can get it away. Whitaker uh, playing it back towards the edge of the penalty area. Plegrizuelo are getting it further clear, but not quite far enough. And back is going to come again. Another opportunity for Southampton to dozy. Right footed effort hit Plegrizuelo. Then cleared firstly by Gibson and then by Galloway, former Everton man. Out as far as Walker Peters. Urge to shoot. Thinks better of it, but the night is young. He makes his way forward towards the edge of the penalty area. Checks back out. Gets it back from Alcaraz, clips it in. Plekrizelo heads that one away. Adams going down inside the penalty area. Claims he was pushed by the Spaniard. Referee says no. No real complaints from Adams himself. Southampton will build again. And Walker Peters bringing it forward. Down the inside right channel. Trying to take on Randall. Still he goes. Right footed effort that was blocked. It hit Galloway. And Zimbabwe wasn't sure where it had gone. The answer out of play for a corner which will be taken on the Southampton right. Three into the second half here on TalkSport 2. Still nil-nil. Great block again from Galloway. He's made a couple of those. Carl Walker-Peters too clever for Randall really. And then into a, a really nice position with a good angle to strike on his right foot. But Galloway, so far, so good from him tonight. He's been really intelligent in his defensive work. Player played in the Premier League for both Everton and West Brom. He's been around a bit and hasn't got too many miles on the clock. He's another who's really struggled with injuries throughout his career. In comes the corner, good shape on that, but a really good defensive header from Gibson. And he gets it outside the penalty area for Walker-Peters. Walker-Peters going back behind square for Charles. Now four towards Smallbone. Smallbone out towards the uh, Southampton right. Another good lay it off, flicked on inside the penalty area. Smallbone, all the... Plymouth man and Zaz let it bounce inside the box, which uh, might have been ill-advised. Argyle do get it clear. They'll try and bring it further away, but Edwards can't get too far. Southampton bring it back again. Alcaraz from distance, and that flies over the bar, still rising. And ending up in the chapel stand, minute by minute. Plymouth getting closer, but Southampton will feel that it's uh, almost water torture here, isn't it? Death by a thousand passes and by 300 shots, it's just carry on going doing what they do sooner or later they will be able to find a way through yeah and wanted to see a little bit more from those two advanced midfield players and already Smallbone and Alcaraz a, a little bit higher up the pitch and I think that was required you know those two can go back and really get in between the wing backs and the outside centre halves push them back to a degree take it in tight areas take it on the half turn and, and try and be a little bit more Dangerous, I suppose, going towards our goals. Goal in the first half, too happy to come square, get on the ball, pop it off. I want to see those two dominate in the game. There's one game taking place in League One right now. It's just kicked off at Wigan. We'll keep you up to date with that. They're at Hona Carlisle and six minutes in, it's nil-nil. And nearly every game kicking off in the EFL today is a 7.45. And we'll go round the grounds, all the action as it happens from... West Brom against Leeds, which is an 8.15. High ball inside the penalty area again. Dozy going up for it, it's off him. Goes out of play for what has been given as a goal kick. The reaction from those behind the goal and the Southampton players suggests that it might not have been. Hazard taking it very quickly, trying to get it forward to release Ryan Hardy. That was a tactic we didn't see from the Plymouth goalkeeper in the first half, but now that Hardy is on, they will try and get him isolated up against Jan Bednarek particularly swiftly from set pieces and restarts but Southampton will bring it forward again and it's constant one-way traffic just wave after wave here on the south coast but no way through at the moment Southampton avoid defeat tonight it takes the unbeaten streak to 17 it'll be their second longest ever unbeaten run and the best since they went 19 unbeaten in division three south back in 1921 so those really are heady days Alcaraz has done well, pass one, pass the second, good save on the follow-up, Armstrong couldn't quite get there, so he was trying to follow up, really good defending by Mumba. Alcaraz doing all the hard work, Hazard made the save, it came back off his fist, looked as though Armstrong was going to be favourite to head it in, 
but really good defending from Mumba denied him the opportunity. Yeah, brilliant play from Alcaraz. The exact type of thing that we didn't see in the first half. I think in the end, the shot gets a little deflection, but it ends up being at quite a nice height for the goalkeeper. Had that stayed on the turf and gone a little bit more square, I'm sure a Southampton teammate would have had to tap that home. Well, Charlie Alcaraz has got three this season. Scored against Birmingham and Blackburn here. Plymouth get it forward. Houghton heading to his left-hand side for Randall. Randall out towards Mumba. Left-footed ball in from the former Norwich man. Bednarek denied her run towards the ball by... Sorry, Hardy denied her run towards the ball by Bednarek, who uh, just lent into him. And then as it's played for by Edwards, Whitaker will give chase. And Manning, in trying to clear it for a throw, ends up putting it behind for a corner. So another opportunity for Plymouth. The first corner of the second half, the second of the game. Adam Randall comes across to take it. Plymouth in all white. That's the Argyle fans that you can hear away to our right-hand side of the Northern Man. So this will be a right-footed away swinger from Randall. Hardy, dark head, thick set, making a running towards the edge of the six-yard box. He was the target, was headed away before it got to it. Falls for Whittaker, but he can't score his seventh goal from outside the penalty area this season. There's that one. He's volleyed innocuously wide. Tough skill. He's not running onto it. It's coming out of the sky. Controls it relatively well, but just a couple of yards wide of the right-hand post. As we mentioned earlier, he played under Russell Martin at Swansea. Martin, happy to let him go. He's got a good goal-scoring record since he moved to Plymouth. Nine goals in 12 home games, three goals in 12 away games, but 12 goals all told. And that's from an XG of less than six. So he's really overperforming from the quality of chances that are being created for him. A lot of that down to his ability outside the penalty area. Here's Smallbone for Southampton. We're nine minutes into the second half. Ball turned around the corner beautifully by Alcaraz. First time ball back to him from Madozi. Sliding challenge from Houghton. And then a clearance from Leguizelo will be able to get it further away. Plymouth then win a free kick inside the centre circle as... Hardy is lent on. That Southampton have got the bodies back. And Alcaraz stops the free kick being taken quickly by moving the ball back a couple of yards. Referee takes exception to that. And Alcaraz is the third Southampton player in the book. And Argyle have absolutely zero intention of playing quickly there. He needs to be cleverer than that, Alcaraz. He needs to understand that Ryan Hardy's done a brilliant job for Plymouth Argyle, just alleviating a little bit of pressure. They're going to take their time naive and now it's fired over the top for Whitaker who's trying to get around the back of Manning gets to the byline stops checks comes back inside onto his left foot and then clips it in towards the far post and it's headed in but it's offside it doesn't count Bally Mumba thought he'd scored but it doesn't count and the offside flag is up and it remains Southampton nil Plymouth nil and Sam I will let you tell the Plymouth fan three rows in front of us because he doesn't know yet but it remains nil-nil. I'll tell him that that's the pass, cross, call it what you like of the game. It's exquisite for Morgan Whitaker's left foot. Absolutely perfect. He can't miss, really, Mumba, once he gets the run on the fullback. Easy finish in the end. But all for nothing. Mumba mistimed his run. Southampton to the other end. Alcaraz, that one counts. It's brilliant. Absolutely stunning from Charlie Alcaraz. And 30 seconds after Plymouth had the ball in the net at one end. Southampton break the deadlock at the other. On to Alcaraz's right foot, took a touch and wallops it into the top right-hand corner. Southampton won, Plymouth nil. The Saints are at it again. No question, Jim. He has been growing in influence in this game, Alcaraz, picking it up higher, driving into the Argyle 18-yard box and there linking with Adozi. Adozi's decision-making has been questionable at times tonight. Certainly his end product has been there. Just shifts it. Recognise that there's a little bit of space, a bit of a 2v1 that's developed. Alcaraz and a lovely little bit of space infield. Just shifts it to him and then what comes next is just a thing of beauty. Recognises he's got the space to take the touch and then just arcs it wonderfully into the top right-hand corner. Brilliant goal. Well, there were a lot of protests from Plymouth players, including Joe Edwards, who got a yellow card for dissent. I don't know whether they've been told that the Mumba goal was actually onside. Of course, there's no VAR. 
But the flag was up immediately from the assistant on this near touchline, Andrew Fox. But just judging by the protests and the level of them from the Plymouth players, we haven't seen the replay that proves it con conclusively one way or the other. I just wonder whether on the Plymouth bench, where they will have seen it, that he was onside. We're looking at a replay now. Do you know what Sammy was? He was on... Well, you can't see when the ball has been played. Looking at a replay there, he may well have been onside. The bottom line is the flag came up. It didn't count. 30 seconds later, Alcaraz Larabs won in and Southampton lead Plymouth by a golden L. And they're looking for a fifth successive home victory without conceding for the first time since 1984. They're on target for it now. Great Southampton side, the likes of David Armstrong and Steve Moran, Peter Shilton in goal. And they were the last side that were able to do it 40 seasons ago. And we welcome listeners from TalkSport. Moments after Southampton have taken the lead here in relatively controversial fashion. Plymouth had had the ball in the net 30 seconds prior to Charlie Alcaraz scoring from range. Brilliant ball in from Morgan Whittaker, the cross of the night, headed in by Barley Mumba. The flag came up, there is no VAR, of course, but replay suggested he might have been onside. Now Southampton scored, no, they don't, just miss a second. It looked as though Smallbones' header was in. But moments after the Plymouth goal was disallowed, Alcaraz scored one at the other end, and Southampton lead it by a golden nil. Former EFL striker Sam Parkins alongside me. Sam, Southampton deserved the lead, there's no doubt about that, but it could have easily have been 1-0 to Plymouth. Yeah, and I kept an eye on the uh, director of football, who's in charge of Argyle's team tonight, Neil Jusnip, in the technical area, and he was in conversation with the referee's assistant as soon as that Southampton goal went in. So I would suggest they've seen on the monitor that that is very close or even on side there. Uh, there was, yeah, remonstrations wasn't there from the Argyle players as soon as that ball hit the back of the net. And it just shows you in such a tight game when the con concentration levels drop or you get a little bit disjointed because potentially you're displeased about a decision, that has just disrupted Argyle's flow to which this point has been superb. Their defensive work has been excellent. Now, Jay Adams doesn't get hold of a shot right by the penalty spot. It was played into him. He hit it right-footed. He cannoned off the nearest Plymouth defender, but that took the pace out of it. And it meant that Hazard was able to gratefully gather. It's all Southampton now. Yeah, the next test is putting that disappointment aside. The game plan's been excellent. They've set up really resolutely. They frustrated the home side now to a degree. That's out the window. You have to commit bodies forward. The, the front one will have to become a front three now. Mumba and Whitaker will have to take risks and get up there and support Hardy. And hopefully for the neutral and for us, it will become a more open spectacle. Well, the live commentary continues on Talk Sport 2. As Hardy chases a ball that is played forward. If you've got the TalkSport app, you can easily swipe between uh, the build-up to Wigan against Leeds and news of all the goals as they go in from around the country. But on TalkSport 2, with an hour played, it is Southampton 1, Plymouth 0. And the game in League 1, which is an early kick-off. Deadlock broken there as well. Wigan leading Carlisle by a golden nil from the penalty spot. Uh, Wigan, who've uh, had the points taken off them, hoping to... Make headway back up towards the uh, lower reaches of mid-table. Carlisle, bottom of the lot at the moment, and trailing the five points adrift of safety, having played more games than the other sides down at the bottom. And they trail 1-0 at Wigan tonight. Smallbone winning it back. Adams is in there, along with Mumba, and it's gone out of play. Uh, referee's assistant wasn't sure. He's given it as a Plymouth throw over on that far side. Well, Argyle have to be in the... Very wary of the fact that if they would concede a second goal relatively quickly, that would probably be it all over. It's getting the balance right, knowing when to open up and uh, trying to get Hardy in. He might get an opportunity now. Sliding change from Walker-Peters. What did he play? He played the ball and not the man. Hardy going down, looks at the referee, hands out. James Linton had quite a good view of it. And referee says play on. Walker-Peters timing his challenge well. But that is where Plymouth might be able to exploit them. Yeah, what cost Ryan Hardy there, Jim? I think he made a little movement towards the goal, made a bit of a straight run, then he had to react that there was a bit of curl and it went a little bit left. 
of the 18-yard box from Morgan Whitaker's pass. And that was just the opportunity, really, for Carl Walker-Peters to come over and cover. I actually thought it was a bit naughty from Ryan Hardy. I think he recognised that, trying to tow the ball away and then fling himself to the ground. So, please, the officials haven't been sucked in. Manning's got it on the Southampton left. He's only about six yards down from the corner flag. 62 gone. 1 0 to Southampton. If it stays this way, they will be two points behind Ipswich. 1 0 to the referee is the uh, call from the Plymouth supporters away to our right hand side. One thing I will say if they got the offside call for the Mumba goal wrong, it's so close that it is an acceptable error. I know it's never an acceptable error if it's against your team. Adams trying to get in here at the other end. 2 0. Ball played for through the penalty area. Adams goal side. Let the ball bounce. Flicked it with his right boot. And Saints have scored twice in six minutes. And it's a little bit what we were talking about towards the tail end of the half. If you can't play through or you can't play down the side, get it into the centre forward. But I tell you what, the two are goal centre halves there. Plegazuelo and Galloway, I think it was on that side. They just allowed, really, Che Adams to just kind of... He dropped short initially, and then he just burst in between them. No one goes with him, and then we know he's got the prowess with his back to go. He's got the physical capacity to ease out defenders, and he does that, and then just hooks it beyond Hazard for an easy second, it's got to be said. Two goals in six and a half minutes, and Plymouth are going to make changes on the back of that. Oh, we're going to see Kundal and Miller come on Luke Cundall who's on loan from Wolves he's played a handful of Premier League games for Wolves and Mikkel Miller is going to come on for the 150th appearance of his career a left wing back who started in non-league in the London area with Cush Shelton he played for Rotherham he played for Hamilton and he'll be coming on for Argyle in a moment 64 gone Southampton 2 Plymouth 0 it moves Southampton, as I mentioned, within two points of Ipswich, who will try and respond later at home to Queen's Park Rangers. A dozy on the left-hand side of the penalty area here for Southampton, who are threatening to become rampant. Adams couldn't get the angle right for a pass. Lays it back for Harwood Bellis. Jan Bednarek's got it now. Bednarek forward into the feet of Shea Charles. And an early run fall through the midfield, midfield from Alcaraz, but he wasn't picked out by Harwood Bellis, who elects the more conservative pass instead towards Smallbone. Played inside the area, flicked on by Armstrong. Alcaraz tried to turn. Randall will be able to get it away. And the Devonia flicking it out towards the far touchline, where it will come off Smallbone and go out for a Plymouth throw. And uh, fourth official, Sam Allison, will uh, indicate the changes. So, first of all, Mumba coming off and Miller on. So, that's a straight swap at left wing back. And the other change, straight swap in midfield, where Houghton, who's been struggling because of illness in recent days, will be replaced by Cundall. Yeah, no surprise with that one. A little bit surprised that Mumba's been sacrificed for, for Miller. I mean, what an emotional 10 minutes or so for him. He, he, probably thinking that he could potentially be... The match winner in a bit of a smash and grab, and not only is it not counted, but he's been taken off as well just a few minutes later. So not a particularly great evening for him, or certainly not a great 10 minutes or so. Yeah, and it's going to be a triple change for Southampton shortly. Fraser, Stuart Armstrong and Arebo uh, getting their instructions. 2-0 Southampton, which is short of the midway stage of this second half. Bednarek, play forward over halfway for Carl Walker-Peters. Flag might come up here in a moment as the ball is played in from the right-hand side of the penalty area. It's uh, knocked away by the uh, retreating Gibson. Play allowed to continue. It's good timing of the run. Azaz for Plymouth working it forward and then uh, played forward down the left-hand touchline by Cundall. His first contribution is to concede a throw. Throw taken quickly to Carl Walker-Peters who will bring the ball forward. Take it down towards the corner flag. Right footed ball swept inside the penalty area. Adozi was waiting for it, didn't quite get to him. Plymouth clear, but Charles can pick it up. Charles and Alcaraz with a neat little one-two. 
Then it's played for by Harwood Bennett. It's back out towards the Southampton right again. Walker Peters with the ball in. Flicked by Adozi with his right foot past his left shoulder. Uh, but he's lent into Plegrizuelo and conceded a free kick, which will be taken on the right-hand side of the box. So Southampton's opportunity to make the changes now. Now, the oldest player in the squad, Stuart Armstrong, is going to be one of those uh, coming on. First of all, though, it's going to be Joe Aribo, who has scored in a European final in his career. He'll replace Charlie Alcaraz, who gets a massive ovation. Man who scored the first. Stuart Armstrong will replace Will Smallbone. And Ryan Fraser, who scored four goals as a substitute this season, including a couple at the weekend is going to come on to replace Shea Adams. Great example of their strength, isn't it? Those three players coming on doesn't weaken them in the slightest. You could argue that that maybe strengthens them, given the form of Stuart Armstrong in recent weeks and months. Joe Rebo's come into a real purple patch as well, and Ryan Fraser on the back of a brace at the weekend. So, in essence, 67 minutes in, it's working out pretty perfectly for Russell Martin. This is how he would have dreamt it last night. 2 nil up, opportunity to rotate, rest, rest some weary legs ahead of the next well, and, fixture. And they've brought on 102 caps off the bench yeah. in that triple change, which, again, highlights the difference between the haves and the have-nots at this level. Plymouth, remember, coming into this unbeaten in four, although they've had a few draws in there. They've only won one of the last five. Without an away win in 13, if they can't mastermind an extraordinary turnaround here. Just past the midway stage of the second half, you would talk sport to Southampton to Plymouth nil. Alcaraz just before the hour mark, Shea Adams just after it. The Adams goal, incidentally, his 90th senior goal. The man that scored the stoppage time winner at Plymouth in August. And they'll come forward again, Southampton, with an effort from the edge of the area, just wide. A rebound, given the invitation to come forward, turn it onto his left foot, and hasn't thought that was past him. Very grateful to hear the ball smack back off the hoardings behind the goal. Brilliant effort. I think it's nestling Armstrong into a rebound. Maybe could have done better a little bit defensively. You know he's going to try and architect. Architect the space, sorry, on his left foot, which he does, and it only misses by the narrowest of margins. Excellent attempt. Shot count now 20 to 3 in Southampton's favour. Um, there's just a brief hiatus here because uh, Plegrizuelo is down, receiving a little bit of treatment. Uh, they're going to make another change, Plymouth, in a moment. Uh, this might be just as a precaution. Uh, Plegrizuelo unable to continue. They've got Dan Scar, who was sent off at QPR, but he served his three-match ban available again tonight. He's going to be coming on in a moment in his white boots for the final 20 minutes. What's the instruction from Neil Dewsnip now down there, the Argyle director of football who's orchestrating proceedings tonight? What's, what's he telling the players? How do they have to approach this final 20 minutes to give themselves the best chance? I think you try and have a go. Simple as that, really. I think... You can lose three or four, absolutely there's a, a potential of that happening, but yeah, with Whitaker on there, Hardy, as as there's, there's goals in the team, the fresh legs you would hope can try and stifle what Southampton are going to throw at them. I think you, you, you try and get the next goal. Probably 20 minutes to play, you try and make it that grandstand finish and hope that Southampton become a little bit disjointed, given that they've made the triple change. Just wanted to say, Jim, on the, on the fixtures... So about Southampton's next fixture, three of the next six against the bottom four, yep. and Swansea in there as well. Yep. This could get increasingly better for Southampton before it gets worse, which is ominous for the other teams, you know, jostling at the top, because I can't see this run subsiding anytime soon. No, unbeaten in 17 if they uh, don't concede three in the last 20 minutes here. Then they've got Norwich away, FA Cup tie against Walsall here. Sheffield Wednesday, the next league visitors here. They go to Swansea, they put five past a few days ago. Hull here, a more difficult game. And then they go to Rotherham, who are in the bottom three as well. So it could easily be an unbeaten run of 20-odd. And remember, as things stand right now, they're two points behind Ipswich, eight behind leaders Leicester. They've both got games in hand. They're in action tonight. Leicester at Cardiff. Adrian Durham is there. That game kicks off in about 17 minutes' time. 
and we'll bring you all of the goals as they go in on Talk Sport over the course of the evening, as well as every kick that counts from the Hawthorns as West Brom and Jalbian in fifth take on fourth-placed Leeds United. If Leeds win there, they'll be back within three points of Southampton if the Saints hold on here. Southampton in possession. They're inside the centre circle with Jan Bednarek. Bednarek will play the ball to his right-hand side for Harwood Bellis. 18 minutes to go here on TalkSport 2. Bednarek's got it again. In terms of Plymouth's fixtures, they've got Watford New Year's Day. FA Cup tie at home to Sutton. They expect to have the new manager in charge for that. Certainly will be for the uh, Huddersfield away game, we think. Southampton bring it forward again. And it uh, drifts out of play. Still think the bottom line. Bear in mind that they won League One last season. The way that Ipswich have played this season perhaps just distorts expectations of what Plymouth might be able to achieve. I think if Plymouth finish in the 16th position that they're in at the start of this night, that is an immense achievement. Outstanding. I mean, the cushion over the, the bottom three is, I think, reward for what's been an excellent start to the season. Hardy clipping it in here, and Bazunu uh, has to come out, get his hands dirty. I don't think that's happened in the second half. He just got there ahead of the advancing Plymouth player and bowls it out quickly. And Southampton will be able to get themselves going again. Sekumara is going to be brought on very shortly. But we talked about budgets, their budget, either 22nd or 23rd out of the 24 in the division, depending on who you believe. They've probably got a little bit more money to spend than Rotherham, but that's about it. And the 16th in this first season in 13 back at this level it certainly would be a, a good achievement. And they've only got one more away game against the side currently in the top 11 after tonight. So the, the points ratio might improve. And they've had a lot of tough games on the road already this season. And they've uh, only lost just over half of them. Looks like they might lose this one, though. 16 minutes to go. Joe Arebo playing it for Good ball for Adam Armstrong, who beats Scar, but not the goalkeeper. Hazard got down and tips his effort up in the air. It loops up over the bar under the roof of the nail. It's a brilliant save because that's coming quick at him and I think he's unsighting as well, Hazard. That's a brilliant stop. Instinctive save from Armstrong, who's now playing centrally, coming in off that right-hand side. Excellent, quick snapshot. Wonderful save. So the Southampton change will see Adosi coming off and Sekumara will come on, the £11 million signing from Bordeaux last season. He's only got a couple of league goals in his 35 appearances for Southampton, a player that can play through the middle or off the right. And he's on to replace Adosi here. He may well just take Adosi's position off the left. Southampton with a corner, they're sixth of the night, they lead 2-0, it's worked short, and then play back towards the corner of the penalty area for Stuart Armstrong, high up and under cross from him, Mara trying to bring it down at the far post, it's knocked away though by Whitaker. and play by Arebo all the way back to his goalkeeper. Plymouth's final change is imminent, Bundu is going to be coming on for them. Anna Armstrong playing on the shoulder of Dan Scar made an early run but needed an immediate pass wasn't forthcoming Southampton bring it forward again Harwood Bellis to Stuart Armstrong out towards Mara Mara has got the ball stuck between his feet for a moment did well then to win it back Stuart Armstrong they tried to bring him down ball ended up at the feet of Arebo on the edge of the D but the referee pulled it back for a free kick and the free kick is right-hand side of the penalty area and about five yards outside the box. Should have let it go. The, the referee, Joe Rebo, took it on his back foot. He was going to look to bend one again. No reason why he couldn't play the advantage there for the foul on Stuart Armstrong. And I think this is a good change for Argyle, Jim. Exactly what you want to see, really. If they're going to go two up for the remainder of this game, just have a go at Southampton and see what they're, they're made of. Lots of football. In essence, they're bringing on two guys that should be relatively fresh. Yes, out of match practice, but two centre forwards who should be raring to go now. Yeah, Mustafa Bundu will be the man that will come on after Plymouth have defended this free kick. Now, Bundu, who was a victim of a heavy challenge from Hakim Adolphin of Rotherham, it 
put a nasty gash on his shin. He's missed the last couple of games as a result of that. But the former Anderlecht man will be on in a moment. Plymouth with everybody back inside their own penalty area. Adam Armstrong vacates the scene. Stuart Armstrong delivers right footed and wide. Wide of the near post. And Hazard could just disdainfully watch it. He had the wall in the right place. Plymouth will now make the change. So Bundu coming on. And he's going to be replacing Finn Azaz. That's Plymouth's last change. Yeah, he did OK, Azaz. Again, not a player that's blessed with loads of pace. So had to do a bit of a job for the team, filling in on the left-hand side. Not his natural position. Someone who wants to play centrally. But, yeah, good shift for the side. And interesting to see how they set up now in the remaining 13 minutes or so. Oh, well, he started off going out of the right-hand side here, Bundu. It's going to be a goal kick which will be hit down towards the right-hand touchline by Hazard. Plymouth goalkeeper sending the yellow ball spinning over halfway with his left-footed goal kick. Bundu comes to meet it, it's come off Fraser, gone out of play for a throw which will be taken on the Plymouth right-hand side. Game in League One, still Wigan 1, Carlisle nil. West Brom against Leeds to come over on TalkSport from 8.15 and... Here on TalkSport 2, at the immediate conclusion of this game, straight to Ali Pali for the darts. Gary Anderson in action there. Tomorrow we've got two live Premier League games for you. Last time Luton won three straight top-flight games was 1992. 13 they beat in that run was Chelsea. And they aim for a third successive victory tomorrow. Chelsea the opposition again. It's live on TalkSport from 12.30. Then it'll be followed by Club World Champions Manchester City Back at home for the first time since their latest success. Sheffield United, the visitors from three o'clock tomorrow with both of those games exclusive on national radio here on Talk Sport. 2-0 with 11 minutes to go. Southampton, good value for it. Plymouth on the front foot. Ball work down on the left-hand side of the penalty area towards Luke Cundall. Chance to deliver. Plymouth win a corner. No, they don't. It's uh, taken a, a little double touch and... Miller, I think, probably just uh, betrayed that with his uh, body language as he uh, motioned to bend down and pick the ball up without a great degree of conviction. And a goal kick has been given. 11 to go. Southampton will play the ball out from the back. Ryan Fraser making an arcing run, just uh, went across the face of Joe Edwards, hoping for the ball to be played over the top, which wasn't forthcoming. Southampton bring it forward now with a rebo. Scored four Rangers in the Europa League final. They played against Eintracht Frankfurt. Now inside the penalty area, Stuart Armstrong taking it on, clipping it up towards the far post, but not quite with the elevation to get it out of the grasp of Hazard. It looks like Bonnu's come right side. Joe Edwards now at right back. So 4 4 2 in essence, with Whitaker, the, the player who is going to be supporting Ryan Hardy in attack. So, yeah, I, I would suggest that's all in, probably as all in as they can go at this stage. Russell Martin takes the mark as uh, Plymouth clearance ends up in the Southampton technical area, which he uh, nonchalantly caught and then the bowls down for Fraser to take the throw. League one, Wigan two, Carlisle nil. Another bad night for the Cumbrians. They've had a few this season. Walker Peters uh, caught in possession and then fouls his man, but play goes on. Miller doing well to win it back, maybe pick the wrong ball. He'll continue his run, but stood little chance of being able to get on the end of... Bundu's return pass, very easy game to play from here, but if he got to his left for Whittaker, they might have been in. Plymouth have it again, down by the corner flag. We're in the final 10 minutes. Argyle trying to make a fist of it late on, but the ball's out and it's a goal kick, which will be taken away to our right-hand side by Gavin Bazunu. The rarest of mistakes, really, from Carl Walker-Peters. Just complacency in the middle of the pitch, took an age to move the ball, robbed by Miller. And you're right, the pass was left to, to Whitaker. He didn't see it, he turned right, he tried to play a little intricate one. And unfortunately for Argyle, it comes to nothing. But just maybe a warning sign, Southampton can't take their foot off the gas. Well, another big ovation from the Southampton fans. Adam Armstrong, the final player to depart. And he's going to be replaced by Jack Stevens, who made his first start for four months on Boxing Day because of the calf problem he's been suffering with. He made six appearances for Plymouth as a 16-year-old. 
before making his £150,000 move here. He spent nearly all of his pro career here. And Stevens comes on against his boyhood club for the final nine minutes. He goes to uh, right back, so they'll push Carl Walker-Peters further forward. Yeah, good to see him back. That will give Russell Martin options, and I think just been trying to bed him in and getting some minutes somewhere, hence why Carl Walker-Peters has been playing a slightly unfamiliar role. As Whitaker gets past one challenge and then can't beat a second half. Well, Bellis did well. It's flicked back inside the penalty area where it was uh, just a little bit frantic for a moment. And left footy clearance from Manning and goes out of play for a throw which will be taken on the uh, Plymouth right hand side. A throw which is taken quickly back for Scar. Scar for Gibson. Gibson playing it forward out to the uh, left hand side of the uh, Plymouth midfield for. Mikael Miller has a great turn. Miller getting the better of Stevens. And Stevens very quickly back goal side. That's good play that by Mikael Miller. It's a lovely drop of the shoulder. Galloway forward in support for McMiller there. And now to be played out towards the right hand touchline. One back well though by Sekou Mara. Mara's got Fraser in support making his way forward. Mara's also got three white shirts around him. Makes his way to the edge of the penalty area. Stops, checks back. Plays it back for a Reba. Great leading of the line there. Walker Peters pushing forward to join the attack. Walker Peters ball back for Shea Charles. Then it goes to Manning. Southampton maintaining possession very easily. And they've done that through the vast majority of the game in this second half. It's been 80% as it was in the first. But just in the second half, they've had that little bit more potency. They've had more attempts as well. So restricting Argyle to just the one isolated effort at the other end. Gibson, oh, trying to pull the ball out of play for a throw and just almost whacked it down the uh, egress, down on the far side of the ground and out for a corner and then hung his head dejectedly as a result of that. 83 gone, 2-0 Southampton. Yeah, and comes on the back of a minute where there was a little bit of hope, I would say, for Argyle, having made the changes, the change in formation as well. A bit of uncertainty in the Southampton racks. Now they're back at it. And I suppose we shouldn't forget they've come back from losing positions to take points in the last couple of games. So that resilience, that mentality has certainly been evident you know, underneath the uh, interim managers. But, um, yeah, this is a different proposition, especially given there's a two-goal margin. You're up against Southampton, but... Hopefully there's a bit more fight left in them. Yeah, the last two wins Plymouth have had have both been in games where they went 1-0 down. They beat Stoke and Rotherham at home uh, recently. Ball played forward and chased by Hardy. Uh, Harwood Bellis has got his number. Plays it back for Bazunu. Bazunu out towards the right-hand side for Joe Aribo. And Aribo lays it back again. Well, five and a half minutes to go. The destiny of the points seems pretty safe. It will be... A 12th win in 17 games for Southampton. A seventh home win in a row. The last one, seven straight home games back in 2011. They actually won 19 home games in a row in the league in that run. But it'll be a fifth successive home game without conceding if they can uh, keep a clean sheet for the final few minutes. For the first time in 40 years, second longest unbeaten run in their history and their best for more than 100 years. Ball inside the penalty area is knocked away. And goes out for a throw that will be taken on the Southampton right-hand side by Kyle Walker-Peters. Worth reflecting as well. It's a very impressive home run on the back of seven years of very unimpressive home results. They only had 37 home wins in seven years, Southampton. Only two last season. So... Seven home wins in a row really is something in that context. Stuart Armstrong playing it in here towards Joe Aribo. It's cleared past him, but only out towards the Southampton left for Manning. Manning back for Aribo again. His long spindly legs getting to the ball first. Tried a little reverse ball in towards Stuart Armstrong. It's cleared. And he goes out of play for a Southampton throw on halfway with four to go here on TalkSport 2. And as you can hear, a crowd of just a shade over 30 and a half thousand here, including the Prime Minister who... We'll be delighted. Southampton 2, Plymouth 0. He passed me on the way in. Yeah. Who Ser had the bigger entourage? Uh, uh, definitely him. <laughs> Series of police motorbikes and blacked out vehicles. And I was like, who's coming to the game? Well, there we have it. It's only just dawned on me, Jim. And so the crowd of 30,000 and then another 500 probably for the Prime Minister. 
that will be nice and cheap for the taxpayer. Uh, the ball out towards the right-hand side for Carl Walker-Peters. Walker-Peters on the right-hand side of the penalty area, twisting and getting it back, and Seiku Mara with a shot that was well blocked. Seven yards out, right-footed effort, Plymouth got bodies in the way, and to keep the damage at two. Yeah, good play from Carl Walker-Peters again. Now he's higher up the pitch, the slalom and beyond a few challenges. And Maru's had a really good impact actually playing centrally as the, the centre forward positions himself nicely in between Argyle defenders, steers it goalwards, but once more another important block from a white shirt. Three minutes to go. Southampton's fourth corner of the second half. They had four in the first. Bednarek spinning, trying to get in towards the near post. Heads go up for it. Bednarek with an effort, right footed. Smacked it into the ground and it bounced back up and somehow ends up in the hands of Hazard. And Plymouth survive. They've been very game Plymouth, they've defended well. But this could have been 4 5 nil quite easily. Absolutely. Hazard makes a really, really good save there again. I don't know if it's luck or judgment, but it comes at him quickly, sticks out a leg and able to divert it away from the target. But yeah, it's been incredibly one sided. Southampton, if they were. Uh, posed the question whether they could go again by their manager. Could they keep up this relentless form at home? They've certainly done that. Been an, another excellent display. Now 15 goals here at St Mary's since they last conceded one. But Plymouth have a corner. I say it could have been 4 or 5 nil. In fairness, it could easily have been 1-0 mm. to Plymouth at one stage in the game. And that non-award of a goal for an offside against Ballymumba, which may or may not have been correct, it was very, very close, will be one of the talking points. Into the 89th minute, a Plymouth corner, can they set up a grandstand finale? Referee Linnington just asking for a delay before the corner is taken, because of some pushing and shoving going on inside the six-yard box. I think Dan Scar instrumental in all of that. He's trying to get free. He's got Southampton arms around him. Ball flicked in towards the near post. Helped on. Uh, Southampton trying to get it away. One of the Plymouth players, I think it was Hardy, ended up on the deck on the edge of the penalty area. Next phase of play, it's worked back in. Headed clear. Then falls for Whitaker, but slightly behind him. And he got his left foot to it, but came off the top of his foot and sailed high into the northern stand away to our right-hand side. We'll be in the 90th minute by the time the goal kick is taken and Southampton know that they're getting ever closer to the top two. Yeah, for, for a short night, night for Whitaker, he's not just sat for him, has it really, Jim, tonight? He's had that one shot that was blocked at source in the first half, a couple of speculative efforts in the second, but not his night and not his team's night at this point. What are the positives as far as Plymouth are concerned? I think the shape of the team, I think the way they set up has shown that they can probably do it uh, a different way at times away from home. You can't go and be free scoring and outscore opposition in the championship week after week. And I think they've probably tried to approach the majority of the away games in that fashion because they got such great success during their League One success doing so. So I think they're going to have to vary their tactics. And I think tonight, to a point, you know, we're talking about maybe half a yard. We're maybe talking about a goal that was onside that has stopped them you know, potentially producing an upset this evening. So it was a pretty good game plan and a pretty good performance for an hour. Just got away from him in the second half. But I like the manager's tactics, the standing manager's tactics. I like that he's mixing up. He's varying the, the game plans, the formations. And um, we'll see how they can uh, go for the rest of the season. Well, those are the thoughts of Sam Park. And we welcome listeners on Talk Sport. In six minutes of stoppage, Simon Plymouth has scored. It's a horrible moment for Bazunu who took a touch on the edge of the six-yard box, wanted to clear it, dillied, dallied, Hardy closed him down, he cleared it into Hardy, it's in for 2-1, and with five and a half minutes of stoppage time to go, Plymouth have thrown themselves a lifeline. Bizarrely, I was going to make the point a few minutes ago that I thought Gavin Bazzuno had done things, oh, he's never going to give it another way. He's got away with that one, though. He went back for Bednarek, and Bednarek just got it back to him and then turned and told him to calm down. I was going to make the point that he's done things with a little bit more urgency tonight, and I think the kind of anxiety spreads in the stadium when he, he's a little bit over-elaborate and takes that second too long. Well, there, it's back to the, the bad days of the late summer, really, when he was giving away goals. Stuart Armstrong playing it inside the penalty area for Fraser. That's deflected wide off Scar. And out of play for a corner, which will be taken on the Southampton left. Well, it's a game in which Southampton were completely comfortable. 
and yet now it's a little bit heated and fractious again with four and a half minutes of stoppage time to go. They've missed a, a fair few chances. Connor Hazard's made a number of decent saves to keep it at 2-0. Plymouth have hung in there and they've got, well, a puncher's chance from here. First goal, Southampton have conceded at home for four minutes short of eight hours. It's a Southampton corner. Manning in no hurry to take it. Sweeps it in, it's headed away. One on the edge of the penalty area by Walker-Peters. Back from him to Bednarak. Here's a rebo. Back heel flick to Manning. Manning to Bednarek. Bednarek back for Bazunu. Big buzz of anticipation from the Plymouth supporters as the ball goes back to Bazunu's feet. And he's got it back again, but clear before Whittaker could embarrass him. And he sent it right-footed out towards the far touch. Where a divine touch from Mara. Walker-Peters has played in Fraser. Good save by the left boot of Hazard. And there's still life in the game yet. It's a brilliant through ball. Fraser... He has to score. He's in good goal scoring form. He could have played square to Mara. Just tries to pass it past Hazard, who not for the first time in this second half makes another outstanding save. That's three in this second period. That has kept the score respectable. Well, Arebo's been caught. The referee decided there was no advantage. And it's a free kick which will be taken on halfway. Uh, Charlie Alcaraz named as the uh, Southampton man of the match by the sponsors. Been a few candidates tonight. It was Alcaraz that broke the deadlock 11 minutes into the second half. Che Adams adding a second seven minutes later. But that Hardy goal might yet be more than a consolation for Plymouth. It could be a catalyst for recovery. Walker Peters right hand side of the penalty area can't get on the end of an overhit through ball. Goal kick taken quickly by Hazard. Play down the Plymouth right. They've gambled, they've brought their attacking players on. And to an extent, they've been rewarded for it. Bundu's lost it, though. And then a lovely turn by Mara. Got the better of his man in the midfield. Makes his way towards the edge of the penalty area where he unleashed and Gibson blocked the shot. Galloway on the left-hand side of the penalty area can steer it forward. And Plymouth have an opportunity with Miller to get it forward towards halfway. We've got two and a half minutes to go. Southampton two, Plymouth one. Bednarek at the heart of the Southampton defence. Now Harwood Bellis getting it forward towards Shea Charles. He's put under pressure by Adam Randall. He's lost it to Adam Randall. Randall towards the edge of the area. Slips into his left for Whittaker. Hardy's got it now. He's back to the direction of play. Setting up Whittaker. But a left-footed flighted effort goes over the bar. It's a nice little effort. I can see what he's trying. It's set lovely from Ryan Hardy just to kind of feel it into that top left-hand corner. But the pass has to be right. I'm doing a lovely bit of space. Right-hand side of the 18-yard box with still time on the clock. I think that has to be shifted right. And surely our goal could have created something better on the Southampton goal. Ninety seconds to go. Might be a little bit of time added on because the Ryan Hardy goal came in stoppage time, so could be a couple of minutes of playing time remaining. Yeah. Southampton two, Plymouth one. Southampton victory moves them up onto the coattails of Ipswich, who are underway themselves tonight in Championship action. Ball played by Edwards past Scar. He's frustrated with himself that he was unable to make the most of that. And he goes out of play for a throw that'll be taken by Manning on the Southampton left-hand side. He'll be in absolutely no hurry to take it. Elsewhere in the Championship, Swansea have taken an early lead at Coventry. We'll get all the details of the goals that are going in at the conclusion of this game, which is about a minute away. Southampton leading 2-1, they got possession back with Mara. Mara with a great piece of skill between Edwards and Scar, trying to set it up for Fraser, the angle was too tight. Plymouth come across and should be able to clear down the right-hand touchline with Galloway. Mara stuck his foot out and won it back, that was great play. Stuart Armstrong now, sent out towards Carl Walker-Peters. Walker-Peters, right-hand side of the penalty area, threatened to shoot and then comes back outside the box goes down towards the corner flag just all about ball retention for him Randall's gone across there Walker-Peters has fouled him 
And as we go into the seventh minute of stoppage time, Plymouth have a free kick on the edge of their own box. They'll get it forward quickly. About 30 seconds left. Whitaker with a high ball forward. Didn't have enough distance on it. Southampton gobbled it up at the back. Great turn by Stuart Armstrong in the midfield. Fraser makes the run forward for him. And Stuart Armstrong has the last touch of the night. Well, they were made to worry very late on by that Ryan Hardy consolation after the Gavin Bazunu goal. But the better side of one, they've dominated possession, Southampton. Those two goals in a six and a half minute spell from Alcaraz and Adams after Plymouth had controversially had a goal disallowed, four offside. But Southampton hang on, seven home wins in a row, four wins in a row. They're unbeaten in 17. It's their longest unbeaten streak since 1921. And they're hungry for a return to the Premier League. It is finished here, Southampton 2, Plymouth 1. And we'll keep you abreast of the rest of the night's EFL action over on Talk Sport. Our feature game, fifth against fourth, West Brom taking on Leeds. That kicks off at 8.15. We'll have news of all of the goals as they go in with more than 30 games already underway. Now though on Talk Sport 2, let's head off to Alexandra Palace for tonight's action in the round of 16 of the PDC World Darts Championship.